Yo, what up? How's it going? And welcome back for another video. Today's video, we're doing G2 versus Fnatic, the LEC final game number two. Um, if you didn't catch game number one and you wanted to see the VOD review for that, uh, then check that out on my channel. I'll leave a link below, perhaps. Um, <laughs> anyways, cool. Let's get right into it. Um, okay, so we do want to talk about the draft uh, a lot right here. I still have the draft in the order in which they are picked. And then we will talk about the team compositions as a whole and what they can do to win and all that good stuff. So looking at the draft, uh, the first three bands are exactly the same um, and are expected for each team. And if you, uh, if you don't know their pocket picks, then you should know their pocket picks by now. But if you don't know, watch the first video. A lot of these are pocket pick bands, the Aatrox, and then and then there's also the Aatrox and the Rakan band, which are pretty standard meta bands, um, especially if you don't want to give over Zyra Rakan and especially Aatrox for Bwipo. So those are pretty normal right there. Um, I'll just go ahead and look at the Jax ban right there. The Jax ban is just drawn from game number one. Because G2 seems to have a high prioritization on Kled, and Jax has a positive matchup in the Kled. Um, and then they ban GP um, because they're banning a weak side top laner. And also, GP might be the best top laner in the game at the moment. But a weak side top laner based off of what Fnatic's already shown. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And then some pretty standard jungle bans on the side of Fnatic in the second half because G2 hasn't shown the jungler. Okay, cool. So let's look at the actual draft. Something that's really interesting is the willingness for G2 to give over Akali. Um, it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, they have blue side first pick and um, when Akali's open, almost every single team in the world selects uh, Akali on blue side. So it's pretty interesting, their willingness to give this over. So they must prefer the uh, Silas side of the matchup or just prefer Jesus, I had a burp, dude. Uh, they must just prefer the uh, Cywus in general. So generally how that matchup goes is it's very Akali favored, one through six, or one through five, and then at six it becomes Cywus favored in most cases. When it becomes Cywus favored, his kit is just uh, better able to deal with burst because of his you know comeback mechanic with his Kingslayer. So at six, it's beneficial to the Silas, but then at uh, and it also has superior wave clear at that time in the game, so you can roam better. Um, but at like level nine, it becomes a Kali favorite because she matches in wave clear and she has her gun blade and has much more kill threat on you. So it actually becomes it's a Kali favored, Silas favored, then a Kali favored, <clears throat> and then the later stages of the game. Maybe Sawa's favorite, but it's really not about the matchup anymore. It's more about uh, team play at that point. Okay, uh, cool. We have Thresh and um, Thresh and Kaisa taken at the two three. That's after Akali and Gragas were already shown. That's pretty interesting that they pick that at that point um, when the opposing bot laner hasn't been shown and Kai and Zaya is still up. Uh, so just more prioritization on the Kaisa, and they pick a Thresh, which is. Somewhat of a safe lane. <clears throat> so somewhat of a safe lane. Has a good matchup in the Leona if... Um, has a good matchup in the Leona if, if Fnatic was going to bring out the Leona again. So that may have just been a preemptive pick. Because they know they're going to get counterpicked at support. Or counterpicked in the bot lane anyway. So they were hoping uh, of just kind of stuffing the Leona. If, just in case Fnatic's Leona priority is super high. So has a good matchup in Leona. Uh, Semi-safe lane, but kind of a kill lane. Um, has a lot of has a lot of gank assistance, so there we go. That's a good setup with that. Um, cool. And then um, they respond with uh, with the Zaya pick, which you know, if Zaya and Kaiser are both left open in the first phase, you you best bet they're getting picked. Either that or Ezreal. Um, so the that was pretty uh, pretty expected to get the Zaya pick right there. All right, in the second half of picks, um, so Fnatic actually picks full picks their bottom lane. And they pick another kill bottom lane with Morgana and Zaya. It's also a priority bottom lane, so they have priority in this lane and kill threat in this lane. So it's a very strong side of the map, and it's similar to when they pick Zaya Leona. You know, you lock them up with Leona, stun, you, then you lock them up with the Zaya combo, and they're dead. Um, same thing with Morgana, you do the same thing. It has great uh, gank assistance as well. Um, so you can expect for a lot of play to happen around the bottom side, and this is definitely their priority side of the map, and their strong side of the map. Um, it's a great draft from Fnatic so far, I think. Um, all right, and then, so that's picked. And then the J4 and Kled are picked um, after the Morgana. So J4, um, you know, best level two jungler in the game right now, you know, since Camille is not allowed to be played anymore in the jungle. 
So best level two, uh, he has a lot of, there's a lot of gank assistance on this team. So there's a lot of areas on the map where J4 can play, but we'll talk more about that in a minute after we talk about what Fnatic picks next. And then we have the Qued. So um, G2 seems to have a really high priority on Qued. He has a lot of good matchups in the top lane. Um, he has a lot of good matchups in the top lane, and you obviously know what Qued brings to a team fight. So they have big prioritization on Qued, so they pick the Qued. And then Fnatic responds with a Renekton. Okay. Renekton is clearly picked as a um, as a weak side champion in this matchup. Um, so whenever you see the Renekton locked in, before I even talk about Renekton, normally you save last pick on uh, on red side for a counter pick. Like it's you know you're picking to slam somebody, but what they actually saved, what Fnatic actually saved uh, their last pick for is to guarantee a safe matchup in the top lane and to guarantee a good weak side champion in the top lane. What, that's what they use their last pick for because they know they have priority on bottom side. They have a powerful early game jungler in the Gragas, someone who can make plays earlier, and they have a winning matchup in the mid lane in the early parts of the game. So they want a champion that's able to absorb pressure. And Renekton is probably the best weak side top lane right now, either Renekton or Gangplank. Um, but Renekton is like the hardest champion in the game to dive. It's so hard to die on Renekton unless you make a mistake. So I think it was really intelligent to picking the Renekton right there. It gives Fnatic such an easy way to navigate the early game and kind of puts it on G2 to be a little bit more creative. Um, cool, so let's look at the draft after the team's already set up and I can tell you what each team will do. Okay. Okay, we all in the right spot? Yeah, we're all in the right spot. Um, Let me change this stuff to the correct setting. Alrighty. Um, okay, so let's look at what each draft can do. So I want to talk about Fnatic's draft easier because this one's easier to explain uh, just based off of what they have um, because G2 is really having to do res play responsive with their draft. So I think Fnatic won out in the draft. Uh, it's way easier to navigate the early game with this uh, with this draft. It has a more of a clear plan and not a lot of weaknesses to it as long as you execute on your game plan. It doesn't have a whole lot of weaknesses. Scales great into the late game, has huge uh, mid-game spikes as well. So I actually really favor uh, Fnatic's draft so far. Maybe maybe I'll change my mind after I dig, dig in the G2s, but I actually really favor Fnatic's. I really think they won the draft at this point. So what their draft can do, they have a priority and kill lane bottom side, which is what you want on Reckless, right? Reckless and Hillisang. They have that. They have a jungler who can play throughout the early game. So they have a Gragas. Who can you know can make those level two plays not likely but you can full clear to level four get your predator boots come down to that lane um you have a priority mid lane matchup at least in the early game um or a winning matchup at least in the early game unnecessarily priority so i always can clear the wave a little bit better but if you risk clearing the wave you risk taking too much damage to the akali so we have the uh, a positive matchup in the mid lane for the early part of the portions of the game you have pretty much a neutral matchup in the top side with the renekton and Kled. But Renekton is mainly picked as a weak side champion because you should expect Gragas to play around mid and bottom. That is the expectation. Gragas can make plays around top as Renekton has some of the best kinks set up in the game. It's going to be difficult to kill Kled as well as you want to play around your bottom lane that can push, take plates, or you can get kills. So you can get kills in this bottom lane with jungle assistance or you can just get plates with the priority you're going to get from uh, Morgana and Zaya. You can just get plates, and Brox can just basically do plate ganks, where you just kind of shatter the bottom lane to make sure that they don't get killed by the enemy jungler. And almost uh, G2's bottom lane almost has no kill threat unless uh, Fnatic's bottom lane makes a huge mistake. So, um, so really, you should be looking to play around bottom side in the early game. Play around bottom side in the early game. Get priority, get plates, get dragon, rotate your bottom lane top side, do the same thing, Rift Herald. Boom, easy game plan, actually. You have champions that do really well in the mid game. Uh, as soon as Sightstone and everything's finished, Morgana is unleashed, right? Akali at level nine, Gunblade is insane. Gragas mid game is great. Renekton mid game is great. After Sojin, he's still great. Uh, so there's a long portion of the game where uh, this champ, where their comp is actually still great. And then you get to the weight game and you got Morgana, you got Morgana, Gragas, Akali, Zaya. That's great in the late game. And as well as uh, Renekton actually scales decently into the late game with uh, the Sojin on him. So have a really easy way to navigate the early game. To navigate the early game correctly should be e actually be a decent closeout in the mid game if they're able to execute on the plan. I right, look at G2's draft over here. So G2's draft, um, they have a negative priority bottom lane. So losing bottom lane. Um, they have 
uh, a matchup in the mid lane that does turn into a favorable matchup, you know, <clears throat> eight to 10 minutes into the game. So it turns into a winning matchup there. So you do have some options to be able to respond to some stuff in the mid game if you don't lose too much in the early game. Uh, they do have the early game jungler and Jarvan. So Jarvan <clears throat> can actually make, so, make a lot of plays in the early game. There's a lot of gank assist on this team. So Kled has great gank assist. Stylus has great gank assist. Um, <clears throat> and Thresh has amazing gank assist. So you can kind of pick and choose where you want to be on the map and try to get advantages from there. So G2 actually have a lot of options. It's just, are their options going to work better than what Fnatic can do? Because Fnatic's game plan is actually pretty simple. So the J this this game really comes down to what Yankos does. So what Yankos and Broxa do. So Broxa has a pretty clear plan on what's easy to execute in this composition. Maybe they take it a different way, but this is just what I'm imagining. I don't remember this game. I don't remember watching this game. I'm just speculating on what these comps can do. So the J4 can either choose to, you know, prov you know fight the enemy jungler at bottom side and look for you know a 3v3 and maybe they went out on that right and prevent the plate ganks and prevent the shadowing prevent the dives that type of stuff or you can take it completely the other way and look to snowball cled uh, or look to snowball mid because you have great gank assist and you know you're jarvan level two you could look to just play bottom side and instantly get a kill at level instantly get a kill level two so like do some cheese so that you what is a negative a negative um what is a negative matchup becomes a neutral or positive one for you, making Fnatic's game plan uh, super messed up. So I think Fnatic won out in the draft as their game plan is easier to execute and really just it puts the onus on the G2 to be creative, to figure out a way to win the game, uh, or at least win the early game, because snowballing is going to be so important in this series. Both of these teams are great at snowballing to close out the game. So I do favor Fnatic's draft, and uh, in order for G2 to win this game, it's really going to come down to... Um, if Fnatic's playing perfectly, it's really going to come down to the decisions that Yankos makes in the game um, in order to order to win it for them. But do favor Fnatic's draft, but obviously it doesn't matter if you have a winning draft, you can mess it up, and uh, and then G2's draft, is, G2's draft isn't bad either. Um, but I just think Fnatic's is a lot easier to execute in this game. Alrighty, let's get right into it. Let's get into the game. Let me make my camera smaller. Let's do the game. All right, remember this will be in times two speed, so um, speed VOD review technically, but I do pause and talk a lot. Um, I do wanna talk about where the junglers are starting, so let's see. Looks like they were trying to make a level one play, but it, it just didn't happen. Vision on the tri brush. There's vision on the tri brush right here because Kled level one is insane. It might be looking for a little cheesy um, attack right here. Uh, both junglers are starting bottom side. So what this tells me is Broxa could perhaps do a full clear to, to top side. Um, this might be the game plan. Full clear to top side, base, grab boots, predator bottom lane. Um, that's what I would think you would do. Or maybe just uh, buff, buff, uh, buff, buff, raptors, uh, raptors, krugs, base, predator bottom. Um, that could be an option as well. And then J4 has a lot he can do. He can either do the Krug's clear, stay bottom side because of threat, or he can do Krug's clear, top scuttle, base, shadow down here, or Krug's clear, um, go up top side. He has a lot of, J4 has so many options, or he could just do red, level two gank bottom, level two gank mid. So many options for the J4. J4 has a much more, um, you know, a bottom lane that you can, um, that you can kind of, uh, much more of a bottom lane that you can kind of, or much more game plan that is more flexible. So Bwipo actually did a fake leash right there. So both bottom lanes are missing and they both come up like they leash. So they're trying to keep this mystery. I would, you, you would absolutely have no idea what he did because Renekton's actually missing health. Oh yeah, he does go for the level two cheese gank. Does he get his flash? He does get his flash. So that can be a side of the map that he repeats. And if you're in solo queue, you should level two cheese gank on Jarvan every single game. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, yeah, Nice. Nice. So I told you this game would be down to Yankos. If Yankos isn't isn't proactive in the early game, it's going to be tough for um, tough for uh, the rest of the team. Wow, dude. Yankos is smurfing this game. Holy. He's a camp behind. All right, Gragas does have Predator Boots, so he might look to make a play somewhere. 
Let's see. Let's see where Gragas goes. Man. All right, and then J4 just wants to maybe clear his top side. Let's see. Let's see what he actually ends up doing. Oh, people doesn't have flash. Oh, my God. No, he got solo killed. All right, tragedy strikes on the rift. Yankos is hard smurfing. All right, Yankos is actually going to base. Look towards bottom. This is super obvious, by the way. Like, this is obvious that this is what's going to happen. So I don't know why G2 is in a position to let this happen. Did he get over the... He must have got over the wall. But it doesn't make a difference to the net vision of this. It should be with intuition. That you should know this is going to happen. Because of what's happening in the top side. And what I just, what I talked about in the area... I, I, I don't remember watching this game. I didn't watch this game and just make an analysis based off of what I already know happens. Like, when you look at their composition... That he wants to go top side, clear his top side, get predator boots and gank bottom. That is 100% what this team comp wants to do. I mean, they do escape the gank, um, but they should be playing in a way to where uh, where Mickey does not have to flash. Like he should be playing behind perks, perhaps. You know, just for the time being, just for that. You know, that minute you might lose a couple CS, might lose a little bit of XP, but you're not going to lose your flash. And then you can go back to playing normal. Oh, nice. How did that happen? Died with this flash up. Interesting. Good play by Broxa. It's very surprising that you die and... Just shouldn't be trading that hard with an Akali that early, honestly. I think it's honestly a misplay. But that's just, that's just how Caps plays, man. He goes deep in. Alright, now it's going to be interesting what J4 does. Because what's important to know right now is flashless, flashless... Flashless. Flashless. So there's a lot of options uh, for Yankos to do. It would be nice to see him play around mid and top again. I mean, you could just hard snowball this quad right now. So Yankos has so many options that he has to deal with. Hmm. Hmm. It looks like he's just going to, he could just go for full clear at the moment. Which might be what he ends up doing, or he's going to be very behind in XP. Interesting. <clears throat> Fnatic's bottom lane is playing very safe. Because um, they know Brox is on the top side of the map. Nice. They get his, get his ult off. He just turned 6. That's really impactful that they got his, they actually got his 6 right there. Um, so that he can't actually ult bottom. He's just sneaking a Drake. Neutral priority right now. So Fnatic's playing this way bottom, even though they can't play more aggressive because of Brox's positioning on the map. And now they see. Now they know. Inca's getting low, bro. And now that they know their jungler's on the side of the map, they can play more aggressive. You see the positioning of Fnatic's bottom lane. <clears throat> and they could perhaps look for a play on bottom lane. But since they were spotted on vision, it's going to be tough because Yankos can immediately pass bottom, and he also has his Krugs up, so it's not a, like a deficit for him to go down there. Crazy how this matchup has turned into the top lane. I feel like th they should be, Wonder should be snowballing right now. Level 6, that does become a good matchup for Renekton, of course. Level 6 Renekton is insane. Abuipa did just burn his flash, so they can look to make a player on top. Let's see what actually happens. Oh, they're still going in to punish Hillisang's flash. So it's very important to just know who doesn't have flash and who, where you can punish. Yeah, okay. So they're looking either for a gank or just to get a queen reset. So we're looking for a queen reset there. Because they did not know where Broxa is. So that was that was mainly just for the reset. Be interesting if this lane gank works out. But anyway, this is what this is the lane they want to play around. Okay, this is how that's happening. Because Wonder's playing like that. He's playing super aggressive, which is great. Because J4's on his side of the map. Caps has priority. 
They're just chunking for a dive. Man, they do a lane swap. Yeah, so that lane swap is good right there um, because Wonder has TP. The Wonder has TP. Um, the neutral that's up is already on top side. So if, oh, wow, there's a cast coming out. So if you TP up here, you should have the numbers advantage because Reckless just now TP'd. Reckless is going to get a bunch of tower plates. The Wonder can just base and TP back to the tower, or maybe he's going to TP back to this fight. If he TPs back to this fight, they are going to lose bottom tower and Reckless is going to get full plate. So it doesn't seem very worth to me to teleport back to this fight. It seems more worth to me to teleport to the bottom. Okay. Yeah, okay, cool. Great play by G2. That was great, 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 great play by G2. So their neutral wasn't up, so they, they lane swapped, got the neutral on the top side, and then uh, they had the TP of their top laner to execute the lane swap completely. It's a perfect play by um, perfect play by G2. The only downside is this Infernal was coming up in 30 seconds. So Fnatic can respond by not, not executing the lane swap and then getting full prio on bottom side set up and have the priority on Infernal Drake. That is the only downside to that plan. But while that's happening, who has Rift Herald? J4 does. They can make a Rift Herald play somewhere else as a response. They could totally make a Rift Herald play mid right now. Okay, they're actually gonna move everybody down. Whippo does have TP though. So they're moving everybody down from the Infernal. It does look like G2 is actually gonna get it. Huh. Doesn't seem like they should be able to do that. <laughs> How are they able to do that? Let's watch. How long has Reckless been bottom? They really need to be pushing bottom lane. They should be full pushing right now, right? Okay, they are. They're full pushing bottom lane. Roxa gets chased out by Yankos. Oh, they just decide to give it up. <laughs> Weird. It seems like they... It seems like they didn't have to do that, but huh, they have a health advantage. Perks does have a level advantage and does have a item break point, but it doesn't seem like that important. Interesting. It seems like they didn't have to do that. Roxa got chased out by by J4, but I feel like Kled shouldn't have been able to walk past Zaya and Morgana. Interesting that they gave that up because they have the push topside and TP advantage. Perks has to walk all the way down with 40% HP and Kled shouldn't have been able to walk through the river. It should have just been, like if Kled walks through the river, they kill Kled and then they just reshove the lane and then, and then go and join Broxa if he ends up having to fight the jungler 1v1. Very interesting. It seems like they didn't have to do that, but I th I think they're just scared of taking the fight with Kled and how how, how what a little boy Renekton is right now. It's very interesting. Seems seems like maybe they didn't have to give that up. <sighs> hmm. Infernal Drake early in the game isn't super valuable. You know, obviously scales super well. So the idea here is they don't want to lose a fight here because a Renekton is a small boy. And maybe they just value getting the Renekton plates and denying XP over this dragon. Um, that's probably the thought process here, which could be the correct play to make, actually. That's probably the thought, press going here, thought process going here. It said, unless they have a perfect setup, they'll go for the Infernal Drake. If not, they're really valuing denying this minion wave. And um, yeah, denying this minion wave. And they can deny bottom, probably, maybe. Or they might not be able to based off the positioning of G2. But deny top and get a couple plates on their Renekton. They probably value that more because Renekton is such a small boy. That's that's honestly what it is. Which may be the correct call. 
I felt like they could have got priority on that and actually gotten the Infernal Drake, but it wouldn't have got Renekton back into the game. I think they value getting Renekton back in the game. Well, that's interesting. I don't know how that happened. Ugh, Nemesis has to back. Nemesis should be winning these trades now, but that may have been a 2v1. Hard to tell. The camera was jumping around. <clears throat> How many points I get? Renekton got two points. Who's TPing in? Who is that? Oh, Caps is TPing in. Rock's a flash. Okay. A reckless flash. He didn't want to get. He didn't want to get. Uh, he didn't want to get E flashed by Wonder, maybe. Interesting. Alrighty. Man, so Perks is very big in this game. Um, the early game did not go as planned for Fnatic. Honestly, Yankos was smurfing in the early game. It kind of made this whole top side explode. Interesting. Pretty even game. Pretty even game state at this point. It's going to come down to who makes the plays. He can't take the E because he's not Volk because he lost it in the mid fight. Very interesting. Oh, okay. They just caught him backing. I see. Unfortunate. Alright, so... Um, G2 may look for a 1-3-1 setup. Fnatic can match in the 1-3-1. Uh, Renekton does have Sojin right now, so he actually might be stronger than the Kled. Even though he's 0-3, he might actually be able to full match in the side lane. So both teams are going to look for a 1-3-1. This is where the game most likely is going to slow down, unless somebody is just caught out in rotation. Oof. A nice play by Caps, dodging out on the body slam. Oof, now we're in a really good position for a G2. So they're in a 1 3 1 situation. They just got the. And they got uh, two kills in the side lane. Oof, this game is still going to be slow until this objective pops up, most likely, unless one of the teams want a hard force or somebody makes a mistake. Yeah, there's no way you can actually dive and get the kill. On Sojin and Renekton, but Renekton's ult and Sojin are down. His cooldown is pretty short, so he should have it up for the dragon fight if teams decide to fight over the dragon. So that's what I'm saying. Just people getting caught in rotation is the only thing that's going to happen right now, probably. But most likely, we're just going to go through a 1 3 1 setup um, until someone wants to fight over something. This Ocean Drake, Fnatic may just full give this Ocean Drake and just look to, you know, let's just get Reckless three items and fight on the Baron. Might be the call here. But they're just bleeding out gold at the moment. They actually do trade out, so that's okay. Renekton is cheating topside. Let's see what comes around with that. Ooh, yeah, just people getting caught on rotation right now. Ooh, Brox is dead. And now this is looking real boom right here. My nemesis just ulted in. Might be able to make something of it. Hmm. Nope. Just lose two again. Yeah, Fnatic's just bleeding. They really should honestly play for three item. Give this Ocean Drake and look to challenge at Baron. Honestly is what I think should happen right here, but... Just taking a bunch of fights in rotation, trying to make some plays when they have no position to actually do it. Honestly think they should just try to get three item three items Aya and you know fight for the Baron Dance. <clears throat> Maybe look for plays in rotation, but you have to make sure it's hard for them to even get a control on control of a quadrant on the map. They can only look for fights on rotations or fights in the middle of the map if they have full full vision and full you know full knowledge of the enemy team but they just don't and they're trying to make plays without it it's very hard. oh my god look at this thing 
Oh. Oh no. It kind of just like, why are you even there? Because you guys shouldn't be fighting over this dragon unless... I don't know why Hillsang is there. <laughs> He's getting wards. Well, you can't in this position of the game unless you, your full team walking in. That was big. He just wanted to give Yankos his 1,000th kill, right? <sighs> like, I don't even think fighting over the Ocean Drake is worth, but the only way that you do is if you actually are able to move it as a unit, get uh, get control of a side of the map that you want. Um, so you can set up a good fight for yourself. Um, there's a lot of ways to set up a good fight with this composition, but yeah, I think just the Ocean Drake's just not there for them. G2's in a great spot now. They're getting all these picks on all these picks on the rotation. I keep saying that by the way, but whatever. They keep getting all these picks on the rotation. They got all the outers. They have a lot of Baron damage with the uh, Kaisa and Kled and Silas, so. They're in a really good spot. <clears throat> Kaisa's Marmana is about to transform, I would imagine. They can actually stick to their 1-3-1 one, one setup for a while. Um, wow, they just got another inner tower. And... Yeah. They can do their 1-3-1 one, one setup and look for fights on rotation, just like this. They are going to end up losing out on this. Um... Because they didn't have the proper setup. But they can look for fights like this, is what I'm saying. That fight did not go well, but they can look for fights like that. Uh, establishing vision control. I mean, this was honestly just like Wonder kind of wandering around. And then getting picked, and then the, them deciding to fight. That's not what I mean by picking a fight on rotation. It's more of like... Taking a side of the map you want control on. So let's say you won 1-4. Then you take control of this quadrant with vision, right? Um, and then you just have some people creeping in here. Um, and whenever people are rotating over through the jungle, you pounce on them like a tiger. You know what I'm saying? That's not really how you do it. Wonder was actually caught wondering. That was pretty weird. Well, they could just stick to a 1-3-1. One, one. Uh, stick to a 1-3-1. One, one, get split push, split push vision. Um, and then look for a fight. I mean, keep saying it. Look for fights on rotations. Um, or... Or they can just full set up in this quadrant of the jungle and have Baron Threat. So they don't have Baron Threat yet. It's kind of a little too early in the game to have Baron Threat unless they get a wipe. So they might stick to this 1-3-1 for the next you know, five minutes or so, get another item, um, and then actually set up in this quadrant of the jungle and uh, look for Baron Threat. Or they might do it now. It's hard to, do, hard to have Baron Threat this early in the game unless you wipe the enemy team. Because if you're caught doing the Baron at this point, then you're just dead. So they're actually just going to set up Vision in this quadrant, get a deep push on top side, top side and mid, where Cyrus is just catching the waves. Yeah, Cyrus has TP up, so they're going to get Vision control of this top quadrant, catch people on rotation, deep push top, uh, deep push mid, um, and then if they kill anybody right here, <clears throat> they can immediately peel back to the Baron. There are some TP flanks that could possibly happen, but TP on Nemesis is down, so it's unlikely. That the TP flank is possible. Yep. Tough thing is, is both of them are backing right now, so Fanatic's just going to retake Vision. They come for a wraparound on Renekton, but Renekton based. So actually, they just lose all the Vision control they just established here um, because of the base timings, but I guess they had the base. Well, that was actually Blipo's TP because he saw them rotating over through this Vision line right here. Okay. So they did get a TP on out, TP out. So this actually makes it so much easier to set up on the side of the map. If they get any kills, they can peel back to the Baron so easily since Bwipo lost his TP. Bwipo and Kali might switch sides of the map now. Well, they're actually going to look for a fight. So this is pretty good for Fnatic to try to look for a fight. Oh, I mean, Renekton is in base, but they can't actually commit to the 1 3 1 setup anymore based off the reasons I said before. Is because if GT actually, GT, G2 actually gets control of this quadrant and get a fight, it's so hard for them to respond if they're uh, matching 1 3 1 because Cyrus has TP and Renekton and Akali do not. So forcing a fight is not a bad idea. But they're a little bit far behind, the Renekton wasn't there, and they lose a member. Shouldn't amount to anything, I don't think. 
Yeah, I don't think it's going to amount to anything. Yeah, so Fnatic's really trying to force something here because they can't match in the 131 anymore. Nice. Ooh, this is a close fight. Ooh. Wonder's huge. Oh, that was really nice. Flash bottom attack. That was really nice. Now they can just run straight Baron. Yay, Perk's 1,000th kill. They're just trying to give away the 1,000th kills. Nice. Nice. Easy Baron. Easy Baron. And they should be able to get Infernal as well, I would imagine. They should have enough time to even base and go there. They can just walk straight there. Oh, nice. He's just... Caps is just zoning. They actually did get their base off, I believe. Oh, yeah. Dude, that was so good. So Caps was just sitting there zoning like they were doing it while the team actually based and then came from base. Did they actually base? It looks like they based, right? Can't tell. I don't have a toggle where I can see their money. Boom! I remember seeing that live, actually. Nice. Wow. Yanko just smurfed this early game, actually. And Fnatic didn't do anything with their options because I Yanko's just smurfing the early game too hard. Nice, they get double inhib, peel back to peel back to infernal. They can reset if they want to. Uh deep push, mid and top. They can do four top, one mid if they want to. Or they could just hard push for the end, because that seems like a G2 thing to do. Oh, that was a nice sidestep. Just sidestep the cask. Alright. And if you get the fight in the in the jungle, then you just take the game. Fnatic has to fight somewhere. So, uh, and what's great when you watch, like, honestly, when I see a good team, like, there's ways to do a base defense, but when you have this team comp and they're, the enemy team is this far ahead, you can't, uh, you can't do a base defense. The only thing you can do is fight them in the jungle, or you're just going to lose five minutes later. Um, you either lose now or you lose five minutes later, or there's a small chance you actually kill them and you come back. So, man, that was game two, man. I thought, uh, I thought Fnatic won out in the draft. I thought they've won draft actually pretty hard. Um, didn't matter. Um, I think Yanko's pretty much smurfed that early game. I mean, it was a little bit telegraphed what he was going to do, but full, did everything perfectly. Level 2 cheese gank got flash. Uh, got flash. <clears throat> level 2 level two ganks top. Gets, uh, I believe they got, yeah, they just got flash. Goes into the enemy jungle, steals his red, forces him out of the jungle, um, and then goes and uh, and then goes and gets gets scuttle, resets, uh, resets, kills mid, top uh, or kills top, uh, kills top, and then top gets a solo kill because of the pressure he made. So um, and just every way they rotated around the map was great. Uh, that lane swap was really awesome. So that lane swap the top lane to get the rift herald and get. Uh, get Rift Herald and get pressure on top tower, get a plate on perks. Um, and then they were able to actually match to where Zaya only got one plate. Whereas if they weren't able to match, Zaya would have got full towers worth of plates, which happens in games a lot when people try to do a lane swap at the wrong time. Um, if they don't have the proper setup. So that was awesome to see. And then they even got the Infernal Drake because Fnatic valued uh, getting Bwipo back into the game. But it ended up none of it even mattering because G2 got so far ahead. They kept picking people out in the side lanes and then on rotations. So it was, this is just a great game by G2. This is a great game by G2, not a very good game by Fnatic. I mean, Yanko is honestly just smurf super hard in that game, especially in the early game. All righty. Hey, that's it for game two. We're going to be doing uh, the rest of the series tonight. So check those out. Anyways, hey, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.